this appearance to the disciples is the first appearance to the students of Jesus, to the ones who had followed him in the Gospel of John. It follows the appearance to Mary Magdalene, of which was also a complete surprise to her. So also it is a complete surprise to the disciples. It confirms what Mary Magdalene had told them, that Jesus was alive. And the context, both political and psychological context of this appearance, is named at the beginning of the story. Namely, that the doors of the house where the disciples were present was, were locked for fear of the Jews, uh, for fear of those who had killed Jesus and who were quite possibly on a campaign to find and arrest those who were Jesus' followers. So, in the midst of that, Jesus comes and is present with them and says, Peace be with you. Now, clearly the disciples were afraid. That is already named. But it's also very probable that they were angry. That is, that in the midst of what had happened, that they were angry at, at the death of Jesus and that of his being executed. And that part of their fear was then this complex of emotions. Jesus' greeting then is a response to their present emotional situation. You know, Peace be with you. So in the midst of their anger, their fear, their terror, their uncertainty, Jesus' first words respond to their situation, namely, peace, peace be with you, peace be in you, peace be your response to this situation. Why? Well, at one level, it is because a possible response of theirs was the same response as happened at the arrest, namely, to strike out and to go to war, to try to respond to their anger and frustration with attacks, with hatred, but also with a sense of defeat. So Jesus' words are a response. His greeting is also a wish for them as to how they can respond to what has happened. He does not respond with hostility. He does not respond with expressions of anger at those who had killed him. Rather, it is his first response is peace. The sending of the disciples is then that the Father has sent Jesus on a mission of peace, of love, of reconciliation. And so, as the Father has sent Jesus, so also he sends the disciples. They are to extend then this mission of peace, of the extension of God's love into the world. The gift of the Holy Spirit is their empowerment. The Spirit is what will give them the energy, the inspiration, the power to undertake this new mission. The Spirit is their authority. It is also a recognition of what in fact will happen. That is, they can either forgive the sins of those who have killed Jesus and who have persecuted them, or they can hold on to them. Jesus' wish for peace means that they cannot hold on to them. Now, this is often heard as the church's authority to forgive sins or to hold on to them and is then the source of the church's authority to send people to heaven or send them to hell. I don't think that's what's going on here. I think instead what is happening is simply that Jesus is describing the reality of the situation. In the aftermath of his death, they can either forgive the sins of those who have attacked him, who have killed him, who will continue to persecute 
the followers of Jesus, or they can hold on to them and maintain their anger, their fear, and be paralyzed by it. Thomas is the empiricist of the group. He wants evidence. He's not going to accept these fantastic stories as factual without seeing the evidence for himself. And the clear intent of the story is to invite the listeners to identify with Thomas because he is the one who is tough-minded about all this. When Jesus then again comes a week later and appears again to the disciples, he talks to Thomas. The beginning is first his greeting, peace be with you. And then his tone in addressing Thomas has no note of judgment or condemnation, but is rather of understanding and compassion. Put your finger here. See my side. See my hands. Reach out your hand. Put it in my side. Don't doubt, but believe. So Jesus' response is one of love, of understanding and compassion for Thomas. It is in that context, then, that the purpose of the gospel is identified. Just as Thomas was unsure and did not believe, so also the listeners throughout the whole of the gospel have been torn between believing and not believing in Jesus as the Messiah. These things are written and told. That is what it meant when it was written was that it was written so that it could be read aloud, so that it could be told from memory in community. So writing did not mean that it was going to be then studied in silence as we would do now as contemporary readers. It rather meant that it was written so that these stories could be told in the form in which they were received, in which they were written down by John, uh, by the author of the gospel. So the purpose of the writing then is that the listeners may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. That's been the reason for the whole story, is so that they may come to believe. At the core of that possibility of the listeners believing is the establishment of the relationship with Jesus that has happened throughout the whole gospel in hearing him talk about the various issues that are present. This is the last of those. How is he going to respond to the skepticism of Thomas, just as with all of those who have been skeptical about him throughout the gospel? Jesus responds with compassion and gives Thomas a decisive sign. Everyone then who identifies with Thomas can receive this assurance, this sign from Jesus.